Hi friends! Yesterday we started a little series on the book of Ecclesiastes and I told you that in the first three verses of the book there are two words that are essential to know in order to understand the rest of the book. The first is teacher and we talked about that yesterday. The second is vanity. Now, this word occurs five times in verse 2 alone <laughs> and 38 times in the entire book. This is clearly one of the most important words to know. At the same time, it is the most difficult word to define. The Hebrew word is hevel. Hevel is the word translated in the New Revised Standard Version as vanity. Now, just to give you an idea of the complexity of the meaning of this word, here's a short list of how hevel is translated. Vanity, emptiness, futility, useless, absurd, vapor. Now, you'll notice that those words are not all even the same part of speech. <laughs> Now, in an academic sense and in a philosophical sense, the word absurd is probably the best translation. It means that there's a disconnect between two ideas that should be linked, either because one causes the other or because they are congruent with each other. For example, traditional Jewish wisdom held that obeying God's law resulted in a happy life. So the righteous prosper and the wicked fail. The teacher says, absurd. Righteousness and prosperity are not always connected. One of the many examples of this is in chapter 8, verse 14. There is a vanity, an absurdity that takes place on earth, that there are righteous people who are treated according to the conduct of the wicked, and there are wicked people who are treated according to the conduct of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity or absurdity. So in a philosophical sense, absurd is probably the best translation of the word hevel. In a metaphorical sense, vapor or smoke is the best translation because it gives us an image to try to wrap our minds around. Smoke or vapor is fleeting. It's here, but it's gone in a moment. And so one example of this usage is in chapter 6, verse 12. For who knows what is good for mortals while they live the few days of their vain, fleeting like vapor life, which they pass like a shadow? Vapor or smoke is also mysterious. It appears to be solid, but when you try to grasp it, nothing is there. All of the things that we strive to obtain, the things that we think will make the foundation for a happy life, are like smoke. The happiness and security that these things were supposed to provide slip through our fingers. Verse 10 of chapter 5 says, the lover of money will not be satisfied with money, nor the lover of wealth with gain. This also is vanity, fleeting vapor or smoke. We experience hevel, vanity, absurdity, vapor all the time. Like when you're enjoying something good and suddenly it is gone. Or when bad things happen to good people. Life is unpredictable, like chasing after the wind. In verse 14 of chapter 1, the teacher says, I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity, absurdity, fleeting like vapor, and chasing after the wind. And we've always known that life is unpredictable. And we've experienced that truth acutely over the last couple of years. The good news is that God is solid 
and steadfast. Life may be fleeting like vapor, but God is like a solid rock. And when our life is built on the rock, no wind of change or storm of difficulty will defeat us. Now, the wind and the storms may frighten us, they may slow us down, they may make us wonder, but they won't ultimately defeat us. We can affirm with the psalmist, For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again tomorrow.